And welcome back. It's time for Morning Rounds. It's Melanoma Awareness Month, and we are checking in with the experts this Tuesday with what you need to know about protecting yourself. Yeah, joining us over video chat this morning is dermatology physician assistant Will Miller with Christie Clinic to share a few helpful reminders. Good morning. How you doing, Will? I am very well. How are you guys? So good. far, so good. Thanks so much for your time this morning. So for men and women who are outside a lot, are they at an increased risk for melanoma? Sure, yes, absolutely. Being outside is certainly a risk that we talk about. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be just avoid outside altogether, but there are certainly some things that we like to talk about. You know, if you're outside for work or for play, um, some easy things that you can do, of course, would be to find the shade, seek out shade and hide in it if you can. Um, full coverage, of course, is extremely helpful uh, with both clothing as well as uh, accessories like hats or uh, sunglasses. They now make those UV clothes that are wonderful for protection. They do that for both kids and adults alike. And then, of course, we talk about sunscreen application. Um, and some tips there would be that we, we suggest that you put it on, um, you know, about 10 minutes before you go outside. We like SPF 30 or greater, and we like broad spectrum sunscreen. Um, if you apply it about 10 minutes before, like I said, that can be quite helpful with the sun. Um, and then we suggest reapplication about every two hours, maybe if you're doing water activities like swimming a little more frequently than that. Uh, and make sure you get full coverage when you're using that sunscreen because I think a lot of people forget about the nose and the ears and uh, we see a lot of skin cancers in those areas. So don't forget them. Um, and then if you if you can somehow plan your activities before 10 a.m. or 4 p or after 4 p.m., you can reduce the harshness of the sun as well. And well, Christy and I are going to be done here in about an hour. We get in pretty early, so we're going to be enjoying that weather today as much as we possibly can. Are there a few I'm helpful jealous. reminders for us uh, that we can do for prevention right now too? Sure. Yeah. I mean. So a lot of those things that I just suggested are extremely helpful, of course. Mm -hmm. um, other things, you know, we talk about the accumulative effect of the sun over time, and that's where all of those measures can help us avoid that. But that cumulative effect occurs from childhood. Um, and that's where, like, someone such as myself who's a parent, it's vitally important for me to do that for my kids. But it's also important to remind you that it's never too late to take those measures. Um, I have patients tell me all the time, well, I'm so-and-so years old, I've had the sun my whole life, and that, granted, you know, that, that has happened, but by stopping soon and, and, and reducing that accumulation, you can still make a, a big difference there. Uh, we also talk about, like, skin types, people with fair skin or light hair, or light eyes, they're at an increased risk for melanoma. Um, a big no-no is uh, sun tanning beds. Mm -hmm. Those are, are a cardinal sin in our world. <laughs> um, and then just, again, to touch on the burns over time, that's the, the, the accumulative effect is, is so important. Um, and, and by doing all those things, you can reduce that. Some studies would suggest that just as little as five burns in a lifetime can over double your risk of developing a skin cancer. So wow. diligence is, is certainly key for everyone of any age. Most definitely. And of course, we always talk about early detection and how that's important. So what are some things that we should be on the lookout for? And when should we go um, see a doctor if we notice something might be a little off? Sure. So. So the best thing to do there is just to be familiar with your body and more specifically be familiar with your spots. Um, and you know, sometimes that's hard, whether you do that personally or you recruit a loved one to help you out. Um, sometimes I'll suggest people do it with pictures to watch you know, monitoring progresses and things, um, or even coming to see someone like me so we can take a look at your spots with a trained eye. All of those are good measures. Um, some things that we don't like to see necessarily would be what we call the A, B, C, D, E's. Um, the A would stand for asymmetry. We want those spots to be nice and symmetric. The B would stand for borders. Are the borders irregular um, or, or the edges irregular? C would be color. We like to see the coloration to be similar throughout the spot. Um, and of course, the darkened color is a concern to us at times. D is diameter. Uh, 0.6 or sorry, six millimeters or greater 
um, can be a little bit more worrisome to us. That's about the size of a pencil eraser, if you want to think of it that way. And then the E would be for evolution or changing. If a spot is changing, you know, we would like to know or some or, or a family practitioner would know. And you can use any of those things as long as you know, I hear all the time about that spot that keeps bleeding or that spot that is crusting or scabbing or itching. Any of those things warrant a, a nice evaluation by your family doctor or someone like me in a dermatology office. So how is skin cancer treated? Uh, so skin cancer varies. You know, oftentimes if you're sus if, if your practitioner or you suspect the skin cancer, they will get you set up with a, a board certified dermatologist or someone in the dermatology office for an evaluation. And there's just a large variety of factors that contribute to it, um, such as how deep is it, um, the, sometimes the location of it and things like that. But oftentimes that's the beauty of that early detection piece. If we can find it early, the, the hope is usually it's not quite as bad and we can just do a local removal. We numb the spot up. There's no other anesthesia or anything. And we get that taken care of in the office, send you on your way and, and, and ensure that we've gotten it all through uh, pathology testing. Um, but there are some factors such as the depth and things that may warrant us to have to look at your lymph nodes and see if those are involved. But we always hope that we catch them early, we get them all gone. You know, we can kind of wipe our brow and say, you know, on to the next one. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate talking to you today and certainly some helpful reminders as we get out and embrace this sunny day. Oh, yeah. Sure. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Thank you. Have a good one. Jeff's got your forecast after this. We'll be right back.